net protecting each of us in the face of loss and tragedy, providing our needs and the needs of our neighbors. It is our community that brings out the best in all of us. Today, we will focus on a corporation that builds community, making it stronger for all our neighbors. Let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Let us think thrice while we are gathered here today. First, let us think of the people we are here with and make the most of the pleasure of sharing food and drink. Then let's think of the people who made the food and drink, brought it to us, who serve us and wait on us, and who clear up and clean up after us. Finally, let's think of all the people all over the world in our own communities with us, in the human family who will not have a meal today. Let us share our humanist friendships and joyful hearts. Amen. Amen. Different 
guests. I want to make sure that we get them introduced. So first up, go feel back and meet uh, some guests of you and the speaker. Yes, um, at what table we have four friends and colleagues from Blue Cross and Blue Shield Alabama. Um, they can please stand. Um, but anyway, Jim Hill, who uh, leads our business operations area, and Dr. Dow Briggs, our executive vice president. And Jeff Ingram, who leads our healthcare networks area as a senior vice president, and he addressed this group back in 2012, several years ago. Jake McKenzie is a ton of you. Uh, yes, uh, Intermark is a longtime member and business partner of Blue Cross. We had a lot of folks who wanted to come here from Mr. Vines. Uh, so Paul Bruce Tory and Jordan Freeman from our account group, guys, please stand up. Uh, Teresa Wilson from our creative group, Natalie Canciera, and Kim Bailey from our media group, Becky Hart from Public Relations, and Cheryl Landreth, who helped administer uh, Blue Cross for our employees internally. We wanted to hear how Blue Cross continues to cover what matters. Of course, you remember, Jake, from when the secretary was actually thoughtful and interesting. <laughs> uh, Mary O'Neill is a guest. I'm pleased to have uh, Tim Palmer with me today, who's a shareholder in our Old Three Deacons office and represents Blue Cross Great. Matt Campbell is a guest. Hey, good morning. I want to introduce Will Estes with Wilmington Trust. And, uh, been, in the bank, been in the banking business in the market for years and now represents Blue Cross. Great. Ralph Summerford and Nancy Reed, so I guess. I'd like to introduce Lisa Harris Boyd. She's the founder and owner of Life is Short Adventure. She's a travel planner extraordinaire. Outstanding. Uh, Mike Brandt is a guest. Yes, I've got uh, my partner, Mark Hogwood, Wallace Jordan here with us today, and uh, Mike Velez is my former partner, currently Vice President of Legal Affairs at Blue Cross. <laughs> Drew Langle is a guest. Well, good morning. My guest is Bob Boylan. Uh, he works with me at United Way. He's the director of our annual campaign. Uh, and interesting enough, Bob was not only a member of Key Club in his earlier years, but was the district director of the uh, district governor uh, for Key Club. Oh. Very good. Darlene Grotto's guest. I'm pleased to welcome Mary Smith, who is vice president of Blue Cross Blue. Rick Swackler is a guest. Our guest is Jenny Gregory, who's a senior executive in the finance group at that region. Mm -hmm. Lee Hollis has a guest. Our guest today is my law partner, Jack Sharman, who heads up our white collar crime and uh, internal investigation. Everybody relax. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then finally, Michael Calvert has a guest. I'm delighted to have my wife, Susan Matlock, who's a former member of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Board and worked with Tim in that capacity. Outstanding. Let's give a warm one as welcome to all of us. And I turn it back over to President Scott. Thanks, JW, and welcome to all of our guests here today. Uh, I want to say a special thanks to Jerry Ann Fagan for really uh, prodding us on this uh, Lee County thing. So, Jerry Ann, you're here somewhere, aren't you? Wave your hand, wave your hand. Uh, there you are. Thank you. Uh, and thanks to Drew Langlow for working with us to make this easy for Kiwanis members to make a donation to United Way. 100% of these funds are going to go to Lee County. As, as JW said, they're going to benefit uh, families with kids. So, very consistent with our our mission is right on point, so I uh, hope you'll join me in the law and make a contribution there. Um, really appreciate Tim being here today. Uh, certainly another one of our iconic Birmingham and Alabama companies, um, and uh, particularly in a business that's getting a lot of attention today as we were talking uh, over lunch. So, and thanks to all the Blue Cross Blue Shield teammates, uh, Tim, that are here today. I also want to congratulate fellow Kalani James Outland for the debut <coughs> of the Legion soccer team this weekend. Uh, James is part of the ownership group that brought the Legion to Birmingham. Also, Kwani and John Montgomery was a part of the uh, branding effort for the guns here somewhere too. Yeah, the branding effort for the Legion. So I went there, I was there among the 5,000 strong. Hammer down, right? Hammer down. We've got to score some more goals. We've got to score some goals. Come Saturday, 7 o'clock. 
be there, hammer down. So anyway, thank you, James. That's great. All right, we also have a new member introduction today, which uh, I love to do. I'd like to call past president Ann McMillan to the podium to introduce new member Christy McCullough. Ann? Our family has known Christy Cloud McCullough since she was a 16-year-old cheerleader at Mount Carmel High School. And I know very well that she is one of the most caring, most organized, analytical thinker, Ollie, and caring personalities. She's also a visionary with a superior human interaction skill and an inspirational personality that is contagious to others. Christy is the principal consultant at Claris Consulting Group, headquartered in Birmingham. Claris is a successful female-owned business started in 2002 with clients throughout the country who they accept, assist with strategic planning, leadership development, coaching, and improving communications in order to create better outcomes for the clients by developing their people. Prior to joining Clarence, Christy worked in a nonprofit center and was the executive director of the Birmingham Cultural and Heritage Foundation, which produced city stages. She is very active in her community. She is an alumni of Leadership Birmingham, class of 2004. She was also selected a top 40, under 40, by the Birmingham Business Journal. Christy serves on the Homewood City Schools Foundation as well as the administrative board of Trinity United Methodist Church. She earned her BS degree at Birmingham Southern and is a wonderful mother to her daughter, Sarah Trammell, a current honors sophomore at Birmingham Southern. In her free time, Christy enjoys a book club, travel, mission trips to Panama through her church, and J.W. Carpenter and Darlene Negrato and I are very proud to present to you the newest member of the Kiwanis Club of Birmingham, Christy Cloud McCullough. Welcome to the club. Hope we'll get you quickly engaged with the committee so we can get you fully acclimated. Welcome. All right, on to the program. So, introduction of the head table. Uh, Don Boomershine, retired president, Birmingham Better Business Bureau, former banker, and chair of the Birmingham branch of the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta, Kwanian since 1971. Ann McMillan, who you just heard from, distinguished past president of our club, and is also a former banker and currently a civic volunteer, second generation member of our club. Her father, Roper Dial, was a member of the club uh, for a number of years, Kwanian since 1987. Christy McCullough, who was just new member and just introduced by Ann. George Hiller, retired manager of operations, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama, Kwanian since 1996. J.W. Carpenter, Executive Director, Birmingham Education Foundation, born in since 2013. Samuel Nesbitt, thank you again for that invitation. SVP Communications, United Way of Central Alabama, born in since 2002. And finally, Coco Mackin, VP, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alabama, born in since 2013. 
Coco has the honor of introducing our speaker. Please join me in recognizing the head table. how we impact our economy. 
Uh, in 2018, we paid over $8.9 billion to healthcare providers within the state. Local, state, and federal taxes paid, including the Affordable Care Act taxes and assessments paid in 2018, totaled almost $238 million. And we are the largest contributor to the premium tax fund for the state of Alabama. Over the last five years, we have contributed approximately $215 million to the premium tax fund for the state of Alabama. <coughs> And we are subject to state and federal taxes. There may be a misnomer about La Crosse. We occasionally get questions of, do you, do you pay federal and state taxes? And we do, as evidenced by the information that's on the screen. We are the caring company. And it's important for us to give back to the community in which we serve. So uh, in 2018, we donated over $7.6 million to 566 charitable organizations. And our employees, and I'm looking at Drew here, uh, are very generous. We contribute, our employees alone, not counting the corporate contribution, contributed $3.6 million to the United Way campaign. Our employees are very generous, they believe in United Way, and through the Caring Foundation, which is our charitable uh, uh, arm of our Blue Cross Blue Shield Corporation, uh, Coco and her team coordinate a lot of the uh, contributions that you're seeing here. So it is very important for us as Blue Cross to get back to the community in which we serve, and it's important for us to support the things that are happening in our community and across the state. We are very, we are very keen on health and wellness and education initiatives. So we have partnered with the school systems throughout the state to offer Be Healthy School grant programs, we have set aside $250,000 per year that we're <coughs> offering grants to local schools that they can apply for. Grants can be up to $10,000 to support health, wellness, fitness, uh, nutritional initiatives, and education throughout our school system. And since 2012, we have contributed over $1.5 million, offered 167 <coughs> grants that have affected over 81,000 students. That is very important for us when you talk about the state of Alabama and the obesity epidemic. It's critically important for us to catch our students early in the process to get them thinking about health and wellness and fitness. Just to talk about the overall blue system, we are one of 36 independent licensees of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. The blue system in total covers a little bit over 106 million members. Alabama in and of itself, in terms of core membership, we rank eighth amongst those 36 plans. And just to give you an indication of the 106 million members we cover, that is larger than our four biggest competitors combined. You say, how do you do that? Uh, it is critically important for us. We offer coverage in every, in all 67 counties in Alabama, and has always have always done that. That is very important for us. We don't cherry pick. We don't offer just in the urban areas. It is critically important for us. Where healthcare delivery is offered, we want to be there, and that's core to the mission that we have within Blue Cross. In terms of awards, and we want to our horn too much, but uh, in terms of uh, J.D. Power, we have received eight J.D. Power awards, and we were recognized as uh, highest ranking in member satisfaction in our region, and we have won that award more than any of our competitors down through the years. The Blue Cross Association also gives awards. Uh, the Brand Excellence Award is the highest award that you can achieve through the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. We, the Alabama plan, has been the winner of 22 Brand Excellence Awards, and that is the most by far of any Blue Cross and Blue Shield plan in the entire Blue System. Quality, <coughs> service, dedication, and commitment to our customers is critically important to everything we do as an organization. No more evident than the Brand Excellence Awards that we receive from the association in comparison to our Blue uh, sisters and brothers. So what do we do at Blue Cross? Our, our mission is to provide employers, families, individuals access to quality, affordable health care because we care about our members' financial security, health, and peace of mind. Our mission drives everything we do every day at the company, and it is critically important for us 
to make sure that in everything we do, we occasionally will say, if we're having a meeting, there should be an empty chair in the room, and that empty chair represents the customer. And we need to ask how the, how the decisions we make every day affect our customers. If we ever miss that, then we're missing an opportunity. We cover over 19,500 local and national employer groups, and quite frankly, we have members in all 50 states. We are an Alabama company, but we have companies that are located outside of the state. We have companies that are here that have members located throughout the country. Although these numbers are, are, are very small and you can't read those, the darker blue represents where we have the highest density of our member, um, member population. You can see primarily in the south, but you look in California, we have almost 30,000 members there as well. Just to, just to show you some of the large, large national customers that we have, uh, just uh, look on the screen there, you will see some of those that are mentioned. And very important to us in terms of our large national customers, uh, the average tenure of our national accounts is 25 years. That is very important for us. It is very important that the customers we have, we take care of our customers because quite frankly, they can decide tomorrow or next year to go to someone else if we don't take care of them. So it's very important for us to do that. Our retention rate over the past two decades is 93% for our groups. That means we're doing something right. But what it also means is we cannot rest on our laurels. The challenge for us every single day is to provide <coughs> our customers with access to quality, affordable health care and to do so in a manner that is caring and compassionate. And we recognize that, and we try to fashion every decision we make every single day with that in mind. In terms of individuals, uh, we cover nearly 300,000, 390,000 individuals and through Medicare plans as well. So not only do we have group coverage, we have individual coverage as well. And those are individuals who are making decisions individually to select Blue Cross and Blue Shield as their health insurance carrier. So we have had to change our dynamics and our process over the years to, to make sure that we are addressing the individual needs of our members as well. Because it's very important that we're providing them with the products and the services that meets their needs and their families. One thing we have done in the community, because we recognize uh, the challenge of rural health care, uh, in terms of giving back to the community, we recognize that there is a need in, our, in rural Alabama for primary care physicians. So we have, uh, we have contributed to uh, primary, care, primary care medical school scholarships uh, to provide access to medical students who are willing to practice in underserved areas. And we've got a video that we're going to show you that highlights our contributions to this process. When I was eight years old, my father passed away from cancer. And kind of seeing what my family went through with that made me want to be able to try to help people that are in similar situations to me. Perrin Wyndham is now a striving medical student at the University of South Alabama. And after graduating, she plans to practice pediatrics. So I hope that I can go back to uh, my hometown, which is Daphne, Alabama, and be able to give back to the um, children there. I know there's not a ton of um, pediatricians there, so hopefully I'll be able to um, help with the need there. That need is statewide. According to the Alabama Rural Health Association, 54 of Alabama's 56 rural counties are entirely or partially classified as primary care shortage areas. And we understand the importance of primary care in those local communities. So Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama is responding. To respond to this need, we are expanding a long-term initiative that will give Alabamians greater access to primary care. The initiative is providing $7.8 million in scholarships over the next five years to the South Alabama College of Medicine, the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine, and the UAB School of Medicine. Tanner Hallman is a student at UAB. At a young age, Tanner says he watched his aunt, who was a nurse, having to suddenly care for his cousin full time. And he was hit by a drunk driver, um, ejected from the car, and t suffered a, a spinal cord injury or brain stem injury. And uh, my aunt, who was a nurse at the time, has taken care of him full time ever since then. 
Um, he is confined to a wheelchair. Uh, he's still completely there mentally, um, and but he can't he can't do much for himself. This made an impact on him and his decision to care for others. Healthcare access issue. Um, there's not. I mean, there's some uh, counties that may have one physician to serve five, ten thousand people, um, and it's going to impact quality of care. It's going to impact uh, health outcomes for. Uh, the, the citizens of those counties and uh, they're, they're not going to live as long. They're going to have um, this poor quality of life and um, that's something that I you know, hope that I can um, help out with. Perrin and Tanner are two of the 30 medical students selected to receive a primary care scholarship since the program began. Most of them are from small towns and are more than medical students. They are leaders advocates, listeners, even young parents, all who want to impact the future of primary care. I just really appreciate um, the, the scholarship. It's, it's really a great honor. I'm just very thankful and um, I really hope to, to pay it forward and um, that I can uh, use this for good in the future. I just really appreciate Blue Cross Blue Shield um, giving me this opportunity to give back to my community with uh, financial help as well, and I hope that I can make them proud. That's just one of the ways we're giving back to our community and what we will do, we will, we will fund the last two years of medical school for those kids and they agree to serve uh, three years postgraduate in an underserved area in the state. So credit to uh, Jeff Ingram and Dr. Dow Briggs for, for leading up that program and it's critically important for us as a good corporate citizen that we're providing scholarships from medical students who will agree to serve in underserved areas in the state. Over the next five years, we hope to uh, fund about 150 of those scholarships so that those students can practice in underserved areas within the state. We also provide uh, affordable health care. I'm looking for the heads to, to roll in the room. What's affordable about health care? Uh, from a relative perspective, uh, health care, let's just be honest, is very, very expensive. We get that. Uh, so it's important for us to operate efficiently. So in the last 10 years, we have averaged returning 92 cents in health benefits for every premium dollar we have received. So 92 cents of every dollar we receive goes back to paying doctors and, and hospitals uh, for the services that they're providing. Our operating expense is a little bit below 7%, and our net income over the last uh, 10 years has averaged less than a penny of every dollar we receive. It is very important for us to be efficient in our operations and to provide uh, access to quality, affordable health care and to do it efficiently from uh, patient's perspective. If you look at our operational, uh, our admin expense ratio, we're at 6.8%. That is third lowest amongst the Blue Cross and Blue Shield uh, sister plans. We're only uh, we're only bested by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Vermont and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Wyoming. Just in comparison, we have almost 3 million members. Collectively, they probably have 500,000 members. So it's very important for us to handle our operations very efficiently and to provide back to our customers uh, in premium dollars paid benefits that are exceeding the market. In terms of Alabama rates, we have some of the lowest rates in the country. When you look at uh, the overall premiums paid, we were third <coughs> lowest behind Utah and Arkansas. Uh, and given the state of our uh, medical situation in Alabama, which we'll talk about in just a minute, that's a pretty uh, phenomenal statistic there. So what are some of the contributing factors as to why healthcare is so expensive? Uh, we're we're going to unpack a few of those over the next few slides, but first, I want to show you where, uh, where individuals and, and groups get their coverage. So, 156 million get their coverage through their employer. It's just like you work for a company, you work for Intermark, and Intermark offers Blue Cross Blue Shield. 
plug there, and they offer health care coverage. Uh, 43 million get it through Medicare, 62 million through Medicaid, 21, almost 22 million through individual, uh, other public, which is uh, government programs, about 6.4 million, and roughly 29 million people are still uninsured. So let's talk about the Affordable Care Act. Uh, Affordable Care Act officially was implemented in 2014. Just our implementation and operating costs, it cost us about $250 million to implement the Affordable Care Act. Since implementation through 2018, ACA taxes and fees have equated to about $582 million. So the total cost of Blue Cross, which some of those costs we obviously pass back to our customers, it's approaching $850 million. So very expensive from an implementation standpoint, uh, which contributed to the cost of that product. I will uh, candidly say the first year of implementation uh, went uh, fairly well in terms of overall financials for the company. The second year of the Affordable Care Act, we had the largest loss in the history of our company. We lost $138 million as a company. So we recognize that there are some things we had to do to get back on track with regards to processing of the Affordable Care Act. This gives you an this gives you a view of kind of a premium comparison. So let's take a 42 year old. Prior to the Affordable Care Act in 2013, their premium was roughly $224, with an annual deductible of $750. Fast forward to 2018, that premium is 500 and roughly $62 with a $2,800 deductible. Let's look at a family of four, 42-year-olds with two children. Prior to the ACA, uh, $544 premium annual deductible, deductible $2,200 roughly. Now that premium is $1,600, almost $1,700 a month, and the annual deductible is $5,600. So, healthcare is very, very expensive. But I will say that the majority of the people in Alabama that have this coverage <coughs> is a subsidy for the federal government. So, a lot of them don't experience the full freight of that cost. However, for those who, do, who make too much money to qualify, they are experiencing having to pay the full amount of that premium which is why you see some of those people <coughs> that are dropping coverage or figuring out where do I get coverage? I can't continue to pay those expensive rates. So it is very much a challenge in terms of the overall premium. Let's talk about pharmacy costs. Uh, 1996, uh, if you took the dollar, this is how it played out in terms of our book of business. 43.5% went to hospitals, 51.1% went to doctors and other professionals. 5.4% went to drugs. Fast forward 10 years to 2006, 39.1% hospital, 3 <coughs> to doctors, and 7.6% went to drugs. Fast forward 2018. Almost 41% to hospitals, a little bit less, 32%, almost 33% to doctors, 27.1% to prescription drugs. Needless to say, the overall cost of prescription drugs down through the years has increased dramatically, which is requiring us to be more active in managing the overall cost. You probably have been inundated with commercials in the marketplace of drugs and what they will treat and some of the side effects of those drugs. Uh, and there have been uh, some amazing, some amazing things that will happen in the drug space. When you look at brand drug specialty and generics, the percent of total <coughs> scripts, generics represent 87% of the prescriptions that we uh, offer. Uh, brand drugs represent 12%, and specialty drugs represent a little bit more than a half of a percent. But when you look at the dollars paid out for that half a percent that are represented by specialty, they represent 37% of the cost. For the 87% that represent generic, they only account for 14% of the cost. And the 12% for brand account for 49% of the cost. 
Needless to say, this is an area where we are actively managing the overall cost of our drugs and trying to ensure that we are getting the best discounts and the best formularies for our customers to get the drugs that they need to treat the conditions that they have, but that we're effectively managing uh, those drugs. Uh, when you look at the top uh, five drugs in a, for our book of business, you can see that the average annual cost of those drugs range from 58,000 to almost 80,000. So very expensive from a drug perspective. And we're seeing some interesting things happen in the marketplace. You're seeing uh, pharmacy benefit management companies buying health insurance companies. You're seeing health insurance companies buying pharmacy benefit management companies. Our partnership at the top with Prime Therapeutics, what we're trying to do is to effectively manage the overall cost of healthcare, which includes medical and drugs. So when we're talking to customers, we're, we're saying don't segment, make sure you understand that it's important for us to manage the total member and not to carve the member up to manage medical over here, pharmacy here, behavioral health over here as well. So we're gonna we're gonna we're coming to a close here, but just to talk about some of the key health indicators for the state of Alabama. So let's bring it home. This is from the uh, report from the Trust for America's Health in conjunction with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Uh, physical activity, Alabama ranks number six in terms of physical inactivity. In terms of obesity, <coughs> Alabama's ranking is number five. In terms of diabetes, Alabama's ranking is number three. Hypertension, Alabama's ranking is number two. You see we're going, we're getting five, four, three, two, and this is a daunting statistic. In terms of opioid abuse, Alabama's ranking in terms of opioids prescribed, our rate of opioids prescribed is number one in the country. Number one in the country. When you talk about the opioid epidemic and all the things that are happening in that space, it is not a number one position that we want to be in. And we're doing some things at La Crosse. We're limiting uh, the, uh, the number of prescriptions that are given. We're limiting those uh, to seven days on the initial field and some other things. But just to give you a GWIS statistic, based on the recent numbers from the CDC, Alabama need, leads the nation in per capita opiate prescriptions. For every 100 people in the state, there are more than 107 opioid prescriptions. It is uh, at a critical state. We have seen some of the num some of our numbers for our book of business go down, but it's critically important for us to make sure that from a health perspective, from a safety perspective, we are making our constituency and the state aware of what's happening in that space. Our wrap up is <coughs> our mission. We provide employers, families, and individuals access to quality, affordable health care because we care about our members' financial security, health, and peace of mind. Everything we do, our mission is to provide the best quality care for our members. And we strive to do that every single day. And there's one example we're gonna show you of one of our nurses who every single day, they are talking to our members and trying to assess what's going on in their lives to make a difference and an impact in their lives. So this is our last video. I mean, they chose Blue Cross, and they chose us to be a service to them. And for us to then get to call them as a nurse and talk to them about their health, they're choosing me again to be part of their life. So it's all of their choice, and I want to make sure that they understand that there is someone that cares. And that's what I love about Blue Cross. This gentleman that I had, uh, a member of ours, um, had heart disease. And during this conversation, I noticed that his breathing was just, um, it was very struggled, very labored, and I tried to get off the phone with him. And I said, you know, I can call another time. You're having such great difficulty. And uh, he said, no, Brandy, I need to tell you thank you. And I said, but for what? And he says, for what you've done for me. And I said, but I understand you can't breathe. <laughs> and I said, he goes, I'm waiting on my angels. 
And I paused and I said, well, I'm gonna call your wife and I'm gonna call your hospice nurse and they're coming. And he goes, just know I thank you. And then about 20 minutes later, I got a phone call from that hospice nurse to tell me that he had passed away. And I knew at that moment that our life here at Blue Cross has more importance than we can ever imagine. That's just one story of the many that happen every single day at our company. And I will tell you we are blessed and fortunate and privileged to have the customers that we have and to serve in the community that we serve. So thank you for the opportunity to serve you and your companies and your employees with the health, health insurance that we offer. But more importantly, thank you for the opportunity that you give us every single day to make a difference in the lives of your families and your companies and your associates, and we do not take that for granted. Thank you for your time here, and you all have a blessed day. Uh, with healthcare issues. 
Um, can those be grouped to specific areas within Alabama, more specifically poverty-stricken areas? Mm -hmm. And one more little bit of that is what, in your opinion, are things that health care from the physician to the insurance provider might be able to do to help improve our ratings? That's, that's a great point. Uh, one of the critical parts, we think, is why we're investing in primary care. A lot of those communities uh, may have limited or shortages of primary care. And while I have not broken it out specifically in those areas, let's say the Black Belt and other areas, I think uh, I heard a presentation just the other week from someone at UAB and they had looked at it and broken it out from that perspective. So I think you will see that depending on the ge geography, there could be higher instances of, let's say, obesity and diabetes in certain areas. But it is, it is a statewide issue. So I'd say uh, primary care is very important. Uh, we are doing a number of things in the community. We have partnered with a number of cities on their bike share programs. We are encouraging physical activity. That's why we partner with the school systems to ensure that they are instilling that into kids at an early age. And it's not only that the kids in school are getting that education. Part of the educational process there is to invite their parents to come so that they can get the information on food nutrition and exercise uh, requirements as well. We know how difficult it is, let's say for single parents, who are trying to work and make sure that their kids are educated uh, to provide meals and to provide healthy meals. Uh, we know that there are food deserts in certain places as well. So we're looking at all of those things to make sure that we are addressing from an, from an overall holistic perspective. And you're gonna see some additional programs <coughs> that we'll be coming out with over the next uh, year or so to address those issues as well. Yes, sir. Thanks for coming. Um, when uh, the ACA was enacted, uh, did, it's a two-part question, did the number of individuals that were purchased ACA policies, the individual policies, go up year by year until such time as that individual mandate was uh, repealed? And what happened then? That's a great question. We did see the individuals that were covered go up in the individual mandate. We have seen some that have slid back. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated because a lot, of, a lot of insurance carriers didn't know exactly how to price those products when they first came out. And we'll be candid, we had limited information, so we were in that category as well. So just to give you some information, this is kind of the inside baseball. We priced our products Knowing the limited uh, things that we did and recognize that after year one, we were woefully underpriced in that product based on the utilization. We had a 9% increase, a 28% increase, a 36% increase. To try to get the product priced in a manner that would cover the utilization. We now have gotten it priced where we're covering the utilization because what happened? Here's the dynamic that happened. People got coverage. They may not have had coverage before, so they got an insurance card. Prior to that, they had been used to going to the emergency room. So when they got an insurance card, what do you think they did? They went to the emergency room because it's what they knew. It was their process. So there are a lot of different factors in terms of uh, uh, membership did increase and then membership retracted back some. Part of that may have been due to cost. Part of it may have been due to the uh, retraction of the individual. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Well, thanks for those insights, and thanks for all of you and your colleagues at Blue Cross Blue Shield do every day. Thanks. All right. Upcoming program. Oh, wait, uh, before I forget, we're going to make a donation in your name to the United Way of Central Alabama. <laughs> okay. Upcoming programs, real quick. We've talked about Sally Krawcheck. Uh, again, just bring a go-getter with you. Somebody under 40, just want to bring here to lunch and hear from Sally. It should be a, a great program. Uh, then, spring break week, no meeting, okay? Don't show up, but go to Vulcan. Go visit Vulcan on us, okay? Uh, David Walker on April 2nd, the CEO of EBSCO, another one of those iconic companies here. April 9th, John Turner, I'm going to have a big crowd from regions here that day. You want to be here for that. And then April 16th, our Youth of the Year Scholarship Awards with guest speaker will be Daniel Coleman, the new president of Birmingham Southern College, who uh, has had quite a business career himself, uh, as well as assuming that position. So 
please come bring others. Uh, thanks for being here today. We are adjourned. Thank you.